Not so long ago, I finally came to the realization that as a somewhat larger chap, and not necessarily the sprightliest stallion in the stable, an adventure bike was gonna be the best fit for me. And so, I sold my hipster CB1000R, bought myself a KTM 1090 Adventure. But after choosing the bike, the next challenge was deciding where to take it on its first tour. And then I thought, I've bought an adventure bike, I really ought to go on an adventure. So I took off the pretend off-road stock tires, spooned on a meaty set of knobblies, and brought the bike here to Norway to ride the Trans-European Trail. Because after all, if you've got an adventure bike and you don't even try to ride it off-road, what's the point in having an adventure bike anyway? <laughs> Right then, well here we are, just north of the little town Stolen, which is close to Bigner, Bugner, whatever you want to say it, where I stayed last night. But yeah, this is it. This is me taking my bike off-road on an off-road adventure here in Norway. Baptism of fire. We've got approximately 200 kilometers to cover of this trail for today. I've got about eight hours to do it in before I need to be at my next accommodation. So with an average speed of about 25 kilometers an hour, should be fine. I'm expecting, well, I'm expecting a lot to be honest today. I'm expecting to feel stupid. I'm expecting to feel like I've bitten off more than I can chew. I'm expecting to feel exhilarated, excited, out of my comfort zone, and all the while having an astonishingly good time. Uh, I obviously haven't come into this completely blind. I'm not stupid. I did actually last week take the 1090 and do a day's ADV or enduro training down at the Mammoth Park near Hanover, where they taught us a few of the things about how to turn, how to stand, how to brake, that kind of, just the, the basics. So I've got a bit of a basic understanding of what I'm doing, but other than that, learning by doing, isn't it? You know, I'm not expecting it's going to be too wild. It's not like I'm heading off into the Dakar wilderness. I am expecting, as I'm seeing already, there's going to be a lot of snow on the ground, especially when we get up higher to altitude. And I'm also expecting to have some ranty sat-nav moments because I'm rocking the beeline. I'm trying out to see if the beeline can be used off-road, but I've decided I'm going to give it a three strikes and out because if it starts to affect the trip, then it needs to go. So yeah, this is it. This is the tech. Strap yourselves in, get comfortable and get ready for what looks like might be a bit of a slippery ride. Yeah, there we go. That's one thing they taught us. The bike's gonna move around a shed load underneath you more than it ever would have done on the road. So, just gotta be ready for it. Well, gotta be the opposite. Gotta be so relaxed that it can just happen without you being ready for it. Like the front is wiggling all over the place here. But so far, makes me feel very happy about my choice to get the Bridgestone AX41 Adventure Cross tires. They're be a bit meatier than they really need to be for your standard gravel road kind of fare. But I thought, Better to have far too much traction than not nearly enough. The whole getting outside the corner on a bend is something that's very difficult to get used to the idea of, but I think I'm getting it. Just goes against everything that you've learned on the road. But yeah, as well as teaching us how to stand, which I'm doing wrong, I'm supposed to be apparently in more of a kind of aggressive arse out, but to be honest, there's no way I can stand all day like that with my back. We also learned that you steer the bike with your feet and your greatest contact patch to the, between your body and the bike is from your knees to your ankles. Look at that. You get the impression the rivers are a bit full. <sighs> this thing is squirming around like crazy. It really does feel like we could be absolutely in the middle of nowhere now. <laughs> oh, brilliant. There you are, there's such a difference between having proper tyres on a gravel road. Well, there's skippiness, there's just that confidence there that after the skip, a bit of a squirm and a wiggle, the tyre's going to find itself again. Whereas on a road tyre, you know for a fact you'll be on your face by now, or your ass, or if you're really unlucky, both. Starting to feel more relaxed now. I think I might sit down a little bit. Crazy thing is, the bike does squirm around a lot more when you sat on it. it. Shows how much more control you have when you stood up, but also how much more 
your bike can move independently of your body weight because these wriggles are far more pronounced when you're sat on the bike with your weight planted on the seat. When you stood up, the bike just has a shimmy and everything carries on, but it's a bit more heart-stopping when you're sat down. So I think with that in mind, screw it. I bought a big bike so I could stand on it. Oh, what a view. I think this is the first point at which we definitely need a photo. And thanks to that, maybe a quick wee break. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. That lake is completely frozen. The air temperature is about 10 degrees, but it just shows you how cold the water is. And there we go, there's the first stretch of off-roady bit. And hopefully, it's not too much of this tarmac nonsense before we carry on onto a bit more dirt. Because who doesn't like it dirty, eh? meters and we're back onto the shitty brown top. Puddles that don't want to get me back dirty. That water is really smashing down. You can definitely not see this on the camera but this shiz is steep. But the bike keeps on trucking. Incidentally, for anybody who gives a shit, running the bike in rain mode because it reduces the power to a hundred horses. I thought the best thing I can do for myself is to limit the amount of power with which I can get myself into trouble. But also, I've just left ABS and traction control on because it seems like with these tyres on, I've almost got comparable grip to be on the road. So I quite like the idea of giving myself a bit of a fighting chance. If things get really messy or really steep, then maybe I'll have to switch it off. But for the time being, it's not really causing any problems. So I always remember, I've got no weight on the handlebars whatsoever. Theoretically, I could just lift my hands off, both of them. I mean, obviously the bike will slow down, but... White rabbit! Should I follow him? Crazy, I've never seen a white rabbit in real life before. It looks like we're taking a right turn up here. Good work, beeline. Some stuff. It's quite cool. What's not quite cool is that this camera position is a bit shit really, isn't it? Let's be honest, no, no, say it like it is. I can take it, criticism is my friend. The great thing with these Action 3s that you can just pop it from one magnetic clip onto the other and then use the front screen to see what's what. Awesome stuff. You can see a bit of the scenery now. Somebody's lost a sock. Wow, 17 kilometers on this bit. There you go, look at that. As soon as I sit down, it skips all over the shop. Definitely a lot warmer than it was yesterday, riding the motorways to get up here. I literally just blasted up as quick as I could. Could have done it in a day, to be honest. Would have been a very, very hard day, but I got the ferry from Hirtshals in Denmark up to Larvik in Norway. Well, there's the other sock. I'm gonna find a pair of pants in a minute. All right, this is getting a bit natchety. What? What is that? A little bag with a Velcro tie on it. What would that even be for? Maybe they're shoes for the sheep. That's what it is, isn't it? They're sheep shoes. All right. What does this all mean? Time for a bit of admin and translation. I'll see you in a second. I just put it on the ground that was too soft and the side stand sunk in. 
What a plonker. It's properly sunk in as well. Oh, look at that. The amazing SW Motec handguard has also snapped off the first time it's ended up on the floor. Well done, guys. Oh, that wouldn't have been so difficult. The side stand hadn't been buried into the ground up to the hill. There is a big stone. That's not going anywhere. Lesson learned. Looks like I'm riding the rest of the way without a handguard then. Didn't even fall on anything hard. This is soft mud. But yeah, so the signs were telling me all about how uh, I can buy a fishing license. Not really too worried about that. That's it. Use the clutch, keep the revs up. Uh, yeah, the other one was saying to pay a toll for cars and buses, and trucks, camper vans, and everything else. No mention of motorbikes, so I'm gonna give myself the benefit of the doubt there because I don't have any Norwegian cash with me. It is so vast, isn't it? So it shows you as well with all of this stuff that the amount of work that. Ooh. I was going to say that the traffic people do to keep the roads clear before I managed to slip into that divot there. That was clever. Oh well. Second down on the bike. A little bit more adventurous in terms of speed of dismount. Three points for the landing. That was really rubbish. Although thankfully I didn't end up with my face in the water. Right then. I've got to pick this thing up again. Now hopefully I can walk this out. Check everything's all right. These straps do like to loosen themselves a little bit when it hits the ground. Bag's gonna need a shower. Tell you what, these X travel bags from Hepco and Becker are getting a proper test today. As are the crash bars. Well, they're already doing better than the SW Motec handguards there. I think maybe that might affect function ever so slightly. I know that some people like to live on the edge and bring grass home when they've been on holiday somewhere exotic, but I don't think this is one of those times. Right then, onwards. Oh, that looks much better ahead now. 4.8 kilometers left on this section. My first lofting of the front end there. Not super effective in third gear, but it definitely took the brunt off the front. Take the brunt off the front. Scanning the trail, scanning the trail, far and near, there's a big hole. On target, 30 kilometers an hour average speed. My aim was to be at the next campsite by seven o'clock. Oh, oh, I've missed the turn. I've missed the bloody turn. Okay, no strike for the beeline. That's my fault. First U-turn. I wasn't paying attention there because we're going that way. Although maybe we're not. Oh, this road is closed until it dries up. I'm gonna have to have a quick rethink then. Check and see how I can continue on this route. That is absolutely stunning, isn't it? Wouldn't want to ride up there right now. And that entire lake is completely frozen. But yeah, that's a bit of a setback, but never mind. There is another road which goes up here and then to the left and then takes us around the other side of the lake and potentially, hopefully, back to the trail. Yeah, I'm sure if it's so wet they need to block it, then it must be pretty wet. And I probably don't want any of that action anyway. Highlights one of the rules over here with riding off-road, which is that it's not allowed. I mean, this is technically off-road, but then this is technically a road. As the sign said, riding inside of that barrier will be deemed as off-road riding and is subject to a fee because it's illegal. You can't just cane off into the wilderness and ride over everything, which I can fully understand. This place is too beautiful to let idiots like me cane through fresh virgin land, laying down dirty, great big, ugly tire tracks. So I'm not gonna go around that barrier. I'm not gonna take the piss. I'm here as a guest. I'm gonna be respectful. clear so far and it leads to the same place so that's a good sign view so far on this side of the hill is more spectacular anyway. That's really tightly packed. You can hear the tyres singing again. Didn't make that noise on the dirt.
Ben's up there back on the trail, but it can't be, because that looks very private to me. Oh, but that is. There we go, circumvented the disallowed bit. I wonder if people live up in these houses year round. Like you would just have to have a snowmobile, wouldn't you, to, to be able to do that. trip it was all about the fjords well, this one it's all about these little frozen lakes apart from the flirting blasted of a bike that I'm coming through on it's so peaceful just managed to lighten the front a little bit for that nasty crevice Nobody likes to get caught in a nasty crevice. There's civilization up here. What the hell was that? Ancient Viking snowmobile. That'd be the gear lever, Andrew. Love it, absolutely love it. Yeah, no wonder there's still snow, we're definitely still up there. That is rough. Loose, mother goose. Back into civilization. Ooh, back to some tarmac. Who would have thunk it? I wonder what the next high altitude hijinks are going to bring us. Find out in part two. Will our hero find some more snow? Will the bike end up on the floor again? Will he break the other handguard? All this and more in part two of this Norwegian adventure.